Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Father, I thank you today for your people. I thank you for your preservation, grace, and your power that is at work in the life of everyone. Thank you for this 11th month that is closing. Thank you for how you have preserved us from the beginning of the year, confirming your word, doing great wonders in our midst. I celebrate you. Thank for what you are doing over here also. We declare today that this year will end well with everyone. As we celebrate you today in thanksgiving and in appreciation, Lord, let blessing fall. Let the heaven open to rain your blessing and command everyone's expectation to come to place. Every leftover blessing, everything that is kept for a time, the time to fulfill all things are here in the mighty name of Jesus. As we depart from your presence today, let it be clear to us, Lord, that you have done that we should promise. In Jesus' precious name. And amen. Praise God. This is the last Sunday of November. And I want to join you in celebration and in thanksgiving today. In January, we had prayed for advancement going forward. And I know God has moved someone from where he had been to where he is. And he's taking him to his or her destination. It was the law that advanced Moses and Aaron. The law brought him from captivity. The law brought them for a place of slavery, mental depression, and a place of timidity. He took Moses from the place of fear until he made him a generational prophet, a fugitive, becoming a commander of renown that Pharaoh and everyone around was dreaded of him. The same God will advance you in the mighty name of Jesus. I would like to share a word with you briefly before we pray. Psalm 120, Psalm 20, please. I just want to pray to make a declaration to you that this year will not be over until your expectation comes true. And in today's Thanksgiving, and subsequently, you are going to pray in this manner, raising your credentials before God, raising your credentials, presenting your credentials before God why he will answer you, why your expectation must not perish, why he must answer you, why your expectation must not perish, and your expectation will not perish. Psalm 120, you are, as you praise God today, you are celebrating him because he's faithful to do that which he has promised to do. Verse 1 said, May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. Let me tell someone, Zion is a place of support. Zion is a place of support. All your dedication and commitment to his house. This year, all true, is a point of support for you. Your commitment to his house, your commitment to his service, your commitment to his sanctuary, your commitment to his presence, say he will send you support. Any area of life that will need support between now and end of year, Thanksgiving, the support will come. In the mighty name of Jesus, you send you help from his presence. I make declaration that your life will not, will not lack help. Help in the area of health, help in your finances, help in all your fear. He takes all your fears away and see as he send you help. I don't know where you are stranded and you are believing God for a help today. 
today heaven will send you help because of your commitment to his sanctuary your commitment to zion your commitment to kingdom purpose he will send support he will send support 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 to your family support in your academic there are things that you present to god that he can't but answer your prayers because he does not deny himself say may he remember all your sacrifices these are commitment your commitment to his sanctuary your commitment to kingdom advancement your commitment to your, your giving every of your giving will come to remembrance in heaven today every of your giving the giving of your finances the giving of your time the giving of your talent the giving of your goodwill the, your commitment to soul winning your commitment to kingdom advancement whatever you give your talent that you give the giving of your airtime the giving of your facebook facilities your phone facilities to expand the kingdom to get a life impacted and blessed the giving of your energy say may the lord remember all your sacrifices sacrifice for the time of prayer sacrifice for time of bible study sacrifice to ensure that someone is stabilized in the kingdom i want you to begin to x-ray this any area of this will be active is a credentials it's a credential that will raise to god this morning as you celebrate him credentials raising your testimonial before god raising your testimonial and he will graft you and may he grant you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. This is built on what I've been read, what we have seen from verse 1 to 3. You go has an order. Obedience before blessing. No blessing before obedience. When you are obedient to him, the blessing comes. If you are willing and obedient, then you eat the good of the land. Isaiah 1, verse 19. Obedience come before blessing. Obedience come before blessing. Abraham obeyed him. I was carted for him for righteousness, and God blessed him until he became a blessing. The order of God divine constitution cannot be reversed. Obey the, if you obey and you will serve, if you obey and you serve, then all these blessings will come after you and overtake you. Blessing will come after if you obey and you will serve. If you obey and you serve, then this blessing will come after you and overtake you. Not the blessing will come after you and overtake uh, take you, and then you shall obey. The barrier between us and our breakthrough oftentimes is disobedience to the plan and the principle of God. And I want to provoke someone this morning to live a life of obedience. God does things in his times. He's a divine, he's a sovereign God. He does things in his own times. In his own times. He has arranged. We cannot change the plan and the purpose of God. I pray this morning that your obedience will begin to speak for you in the mighty name of Jesus. The reason is quite important that you obey God and He will, he will, and, and he will do things for you. If you get to verse 5, say, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord. They that, those that trust in chariots and horses in verse 6 say they are brought down to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Because the Lord saved his anointed, the Lord saved the king. He answered us when we call. Anytime we leave the pattern of God to do in the way we think we can do and it's better, we are like those people that climb on our horses to do things on, in our own way. And then we cannot come to God that you have not done this for me. 
Hezekiah in Isaiah 38. You know the story very well. And read it down to verse 10. Praise God. You know his story. He has to pray to God. Why deprive me of the residue of my day? Hallelujah. Mali kashan taga baba laga sonda. Le ba laga le gazon togo bobo le gazen tere bobo sonda. Le ka laga. No, this year, no one shall be deprived the remaining days of this year. I pray for every one of you this morning. You will not be deprived of the remaining days of this year. You will not be deprived of the remaining days of this year. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not be deprived of the remaining days of this year. No deprivation. No deprivation. No deprivation. You will not be deprived. You will not be deprived of the remaining days of this year. Either by death, sickness, there is no deprivation. Whatever is due for you this year shall come. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever is due for you, whatever is due for you, whatever is due for you, whatever heaven has programmed and is due for you this year shall come. Promotion will come. Financial breakthrough will come. Favor will come. Children will come. Pregnancies will come. Husband will come. Your wife will come. Your long-awaited expectations will come. That's why we will celebrate God this morning. In the name of Jesus. Hezekiah said, Remember, O Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion. I have done that which is good before you. Presenting your testimonial before God in prayer. Prayer is not God, God give me this, God give me this, God give me this. No. Prayer is straightened when your, your testimonials are presented. State your reason. Give your good cause. State why I should do this. Present to me to, to let me know that why I'm committed. Tell me why I should do this. Tell me your obedience to me. Tell me about your commitment to me. Remind me. Put me in remembrance. Give your good reason. Hezekiah says, Lord, I have. Praise God. Lord, remember. He's raising his credentials. Oh God, how I have walked before you faithfully. Faithfulness is what turned the hand of God in your favor. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. How I have walked before you faithfully. How I have walked with, for you with my whole heart. I have served you with my whole heart. I have rated you above my personal interest. I have done that which is good in your sight. There's nothing so much important to God than kingdom commitment. Where to go? Kingdom commitment. When you give your time, you give your life, you give your resources to make sure somebody is saved and added to the kingdom and established. Many cannot even give their airtime. Ninety percent of your Facebook posting has nothing to do with the gospel. It's politics. Your Facebook post, your comment. You can share anything on Facebook, on WhatsApp, on WhatsApp, but the gospel. Entertainment, musicians, actresses, funny comments, even the one we know there are lies and fake book politicians. But we cannot give that platform. This is the era that church is growing on internet. Wholeheartedness. I want you as we celebrate God today, thank Him. That's how it's not a prayer to have come for. You are thanking Him, God, as you raise them before Him, say, thank Him, God, God you are faithful, because you do that which you see my commitment to you. Wholeheartedness. When that is done, then even you have not seen anything in the physical, the exercise of your faith is very important. 
Habakkuk 3.17, the Bible tells us to keep rejoicing. And of course, you know, rejoicing, you are rejoicing in hope. is a demonstration of your trust in God. Say, rejoice. Say, I will rejoice. Even when the, you say, even though the fig tree does not bring fruit. Even though the fig tree does not bring fruit. Meaning, even what I have expected, I seem not to have seen it. I am rejoicing. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the store, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. Joyfulness, joyfulness. Joyfulness is what turned captivity to freedom. Joyfulness. Joyfulness is an expression of your faith and belief in God. Being joyful, joyfulness, joyfulness, joyfulness. And that's what turned captivity around. Joyfulness because you trust Him. Let me tell you, He does everything at His own time. I'm sure I've said this one earlier before before now. He makes all things good and beautiful in His time. In His time and on His terms. He does things in his time and on his terms. You don't take, oh, you ought to have done this one now. Uh, did this say, you have not done this say, and you are picking off his like score. He makes all things. He does all things in his times. Praise the Lord. And that's why I say in Zephaniah 3 18, if somebody is there, and I'm sure you are noting these scriptures down, he say he will turn your captivity. He will turn your shame. Malaga Santaga Papa Loco Sonda. He say he I will remove this this the sorrow of the appointed feast. I will remove from you. They are a burden and a reproach to you. God is dealing with everything that oppress you. In verse 19, says, at that time, I'll deal with all who oppress you. I'll rescue the lame and gather those who have been scattered. Yes, he say he will deal with those that oppress you. Whatever challenges is oppressing you, today is dealt with. Whether it's the area of health, of relationship, or finances, is dealt with in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you this morning. I made declaration this year, God will deal with everything that oppresses you. God will deal with everything that oppresses you. As we celebrate God with your whole heart today, God is dealing and doing away with everything that oppresses you. Hallelujah. This year will end well with you in celebration. God will command every of his promises to come to pass in your life. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Celebrate him. Celebrate him in excitement. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Praise God. Let me just share with you these few testimonies. I'm glad to let you know today the prayer and revival movement in the land of, of Nairobi commences today. In other words, the first service is today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The first meeting is today. And I know it's going to be a great time. The Lord will satisfy you. The Lord caused the year to end well with you. There shall have no carryover or testimonies. I declare the heaven open upon you for blessing, for breakthrough, for visitation, for accomplishment and fulfillment of dream. Whatever has been dealing with you. In the name of Jesus, in this service today, God will deal with those things that oppress you. Whatever it is, spiritual, physical, social, financial, whatever has oppressed you in this service today, the Lord will deal with it. You are not returning back with oppression. In the name of Jesus, I love you all. In Jesus' precious name, amen.